Meet Venetia Digby. She's one of the most beautiful women of the 17th century. We know that many people referred to it. Uh, she was, as you can see, classic features. She has this beautiful strong nose, Cupid's bow lip, uh, and great arched eyebrows. She had auburn hair. And she lived in the time of Charles I. The only problem with this introduction is that she's dead, I'm afraid. Um, she's not sleeping, as you might think. And that's what makes this extraordinary portrait by Van Dyck so remarkable. The story went that Venetia, who was born Venetia Stanley, was a rather racy character in her teenage years. She, she was, in fact, um, before the term was invented, she was a wild child, I think is how you'd describe it. She'd had affairs with various famous people, including the Earl of Dorset, who was a, an extraordinarily uh, glamorous and well-dressed figure of the court of James I. But she had married Sir Kenham Digby, and Kenham Digby, who was a Catholic, but a friend of Charles I, uh, married her and she calmed down, and she, she apparently became the perfect wife. And she was one of the great ornaments of Charles I's court. What happened was that on the night of April the 30th, 1633, she went to bed perfectly fine, in full beauty, as normal. And her maid and her husband discovered her the next morning, May the 1st, dead. There was no reason for it. They couldn't think why. And Sir Kenham, who very much loved his wife, went into an elaborate period of mourning. He wrote verses. He um, went into retirement at Gresham College. And other poets of the time, Ben Jonson wrote a famous poem about uh, what does the poet do when the muse is dead. And there's an oddity there. Why should a perfectly healthy woman die? And interestingly enough, Charles I commissioned an autopsy. Now, that was by no means a regular event in those days. There must have been some suspicion. Why would that be? Well, Kenelm Digby is a very interesting man. Clearly, we're not talking murder here. But I think there might be more to this than meets the eye. He was a scientist in an age when science didn't really exist in the way we think of it now. He was interested in astrology and alchemy. He had a great belief in, in a, a, an amazing substance called the powder of sympathy. And the powder of sympathy was created um, using astrological techniques and then rubbed on, interestingly enough, if a horse kicked you, you didn't rub it on the bruise, you rubbed it on the horse. And that was supposed to cure it. So he was dabbling in all sorts of interesting things. And there was a suspicion that he had been giving his wife, his beautiful wife, at the age of 33, viper wine to drink. Viper wine. This was meant to increase health and beauty, and preserve beauty. But if he was giving her that, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it killed her.